Hi everyone and welcome to our video on folktale characteristics. Make sure you have your video visa on the left side of your notebook ready to use to reflect on the video after you're done and that you have your note taker on the right. Make sure you're following along with the video so that your notes can be completed accurately. Pause the video to give you time to write and remember to use your best handwriting because if you can't read it then it's not going to be any help to you. And make sure you rewatch the video at least once just to make sure you didn't miss anything while you were pausing to write. So today we're going to go over folktale characteristics first, um, just talk about what are folktales, and then I'm going to go over four different types of folktales, the fables, legends, myths, and tall tales. Um, I will give you a warning that this, um, these notes today are going to take quite a bit of writing, um, just because there's a lot of characteristics to go over for each of these. So make sure you're not writing very large, make your writing nice and small, nice and neat so that you can make sure everything fits. Each of these boxes will be basically completely full of, of the characteristics of each of them. Okay, so fair warning. So first, let's start with the general characteristics of what are folktales. First of all, they are traditional stories from a specific culture that are told orally over time. That means that they were passed on by word of mouth. One person told it to another, they told it to another, and on and on and on. Usually these stories were told by the elders of a culture and passed on to the younger generations um, in order to, to pass on the culture, their values, their, their stories, right, to preserve the culture. Make sure you have this part underlined in your notes because this is kind of like the main characteristic of a folktale. There are specific words, phrases, and sentences that are repeated in the story. Part of that is to make the story easy to memorize and easy to tell. Um, these stories kind of follow a pattern that makes the story, um, like I said, easy to remember, easy to memorize so that they can be passed on without having to be written down. They usually teach a moral or a lesson. The purpose of a lot of these stories is to pass on the morals and the values of a culture. So that's what the story is focused on. A lot of times they have animal characters that display human characteristics, and this is called personification. Um, depending on the culture and the region that they lived, those are the, the animals that were used in the story. Whatever animals were around them are the ones that they in turn used in the stories that they told. We usually have themes of good versus evil. Um, it's usually very obvious too in the story who the good characters are and who the bad characters are. Again, because the good ones have those kind of characteristics that the culture values. The rule of three. This is very interesting. So people have studied stories from all across the world, all kinds of different um, cultures, and they've noticed that a lot of them follow a pattern that have this rule of three. That number three appears somewhere in the story. Three specific characters, three um, challenges they go through, three characteristics, whatever it is, but the number three is a pattern found in lots of folktales from all different cultures. A lot of them have happy endings and different cultures have different versions of the same story. That's another fascinating thing that a lot of um, folk tales from cultures and places from all across the world have very similar stories. Um, one story that you might be very familiar with is the story of Cinderella. That is a European version of the story, but the, the same type of format is found in stories from Asia, from South America, from Africa. There's lots of different places that have a quote unquote Cinderella story. And that just goes to show how similar we are as humans, that we have the same stories, even though these cultures never talked to each other, never met, never traveled, but yet our stories were so similar. Interesting, right? So make sure you have this part written down up at the top and now we're going to get ready to talk about specific types of folktales. The first one is a fable. These are short stories that are meant to teach a moral. A moral is a lesson or a value that that culture um, deems as important. They usually have animal characters with personification. They usually have very few characters, usually two or three. This is part of what makes them easy to remember and be able to tell them orally. They have explicitly stated morals at the end. The end of the story will usually say like, the moral of the story is blank. Okay, make sure you have this part underlined because this is one of the defining characteristics of a fable. That's how you know it's a fable. Part of it is because the moral will be explicitly stated at the end. And trickery is usually used by one of the characters. Um, 
that's usually like the bad character that tries to play a trick on the others and usually their trick doesn't go over well they're the ones that learn some sort of a lesson we have some examples here of fables like the goose with the golden eggs the ant and the grasshopper and Aesop's fables now Aesop's fables is a collection of fables and they're probably the most popular um, Aesop was a Greek storyteller, and a lot of these stories are attributed to him. Um, all of his stories have animal characters, and they show some sort of moral at the end. But if you're not familiar with any of these, you might want to look them up and see what they're like. All right, let's move on to legends. So legends are traditional tales from a specific culture, again, told orally over time. They are told as a matter of historical fact. So people that tell them say like, yes, this actually happened, but they can't be verified. They are believed to be true by that culture from which it started. But again, it can't be checked. Um, usually these, these are very old stories. So a lot of times actual records of these people don't exist. They always have some sort of valuable meaning for the culture. Um, and they have heroes who perform great deeds with strength and intelligence. Make sure you have this part underlined because that's one of the biggest defining characteristics of a legend. Um, these heroes have those values. The, the strengths are something that that culture um, deems as important and that's why that story revolves around them. Or they can explain how something came to be. These are called, uh, also called pourquoi tales. Um, pourquoi just means why. It explains why something is the way it is. And that's usually something in nature that uh, the story explains how it came to be. So some examples are the legend of sleeping bear. Why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. This is one of those pourquoi tales. And the legend of the poinsettia. This is another story that explains why that um, flower is the way it is. All right, let's move on to myths. These are traditional or religious or sacred stories from different cultures. Um, whenever you talk about the religion of a culture, those are what is considered the culture's myths. The main characters are gods, goddesses, or other superhuman heroes. This goes back to them being the religious or sacred stories. They usually have these superhuman people, these gods and goddesses that the story revolves around. They talk about the explanations of their beliefs or natural occurrences. And these natural occurrences are usually due to the actions of those gods and goddesses that the story revolves around. They have a lesson about good and bad behavior. And they usually have a hero's quest to reach a goal. The hero will go on a journey, there's tests, there's challenges along the way, and it gives them a chance to show those, um, those strengths, those values that the culture deems as important. The hero, which is usually the god or the goddess, um, will show those values through the story. Some examples from different cultures are Greek myths. Those, the Greek and the Roman myths are probably the ones you're most familiar with. Um, our planets, our days of the week, um, a lot of those are named after the Roman and Greek gods and goddesses. We have Chinese myths and legends and some examples of Egyptian myths and legends. I think this is probably um, one of my favorite types of folktales. I've always found these to be very interesting because it really shows you the culture. It shows you what the culture was like through their stories. And finally, we have tall tales. These are highly exaggerated character settings and events. That's part of what makes them tall. They're big, they're larger than life. Um, make sure you have this part underlined because this is a, a very defining characteristic of tall tales. They, the achievement of the heroes are the focus, okay? Again, this one has some kind of hero that's larger than life, like I said, that does some extraordinary things and those things are the focus of the story. Um, they're usually linked to a specific historical time period. Um, It'll be like back in a, this specific time, like these are linked to a specific year or or time period, not maybe a specific year, but a time period. Um, they usually have humor. Absurdity means that it's things that are unbelievable. OK, um, and these are particularly popular in American culture. OK, American tall tales are, are very popular and a lot of them came to be during the time of exploration of the West, of the expansion of the United States. Um, you'll hear stories like Paul Bunyan. 
Calamity Jane and John Henry. These are all people that embody some sort of strength um, and power that, that showed kind of the American spirit. But lots of cultures have tall tales, not just American culture. So you should have your note taker filled up by now. And I told you guys it was going to be a lot of writing. I'm sorry. There was just a lot to say about these. Make sure that those notes are done accurately, that they are complete. Make sure that you complete your visa to reflect on your notes and that you post your part A in Google Classroom or wherever else your teacher has asked you to do so. And be ready to discuss the video and apply the skill. You'll need to be able to read a text and decide what characteristics does it have that make it a folktale? Um, why would that culture value this story? Um, and what, what lesson or theme is there in the story that that culture wanted to showcase with it. So once you have all of that done, you're ready to go.